All right. What's up, everybody? I'm right here with Bragadino, the best rapper alive. This is part two of the Saturn Symbolism Breakdown. All right. So this is the part two. Um, I'm going to go over some things that I didn't go over last time. So right here is the this is the flower of life. Actually, this is the flower of life down here. Up here is the seed of life. And right here, this this big shape right here is the germ of life. But but right here, you have six circles and the middle circle is the seventh and the one around the entire outside is eight. These are eight circles in the bottom right. But if you go up here, there's there's many circles. There's like 20 of them here. So the point is, when you rotate the flower of life, you get the lotus of life, which is a thousand petal lotus, which is, uh, it's this right here. It's a crown chakra. It's what everything is. So, so from, from this here, brother, from this symbol, we get all the shapes. Let me show you something. Um, we get, we get this right here. I think I, did I put it in my other? Before we get started, tell, uh, tell the people who's a couple of your big time teachers. Uh, like I'll mention, I'll mention one. How about Dan Winter? Dan Winter, yes. So Dan Winter talks about how to die properly and how to lucid dream, which is the same science. How to die properly and how to lucid dream is the same formula to get the same result. So in order to, in order to lucid dream, you have to be conscious within your subconscious mind. So it's called super conscious. When you're not dreaming in your dream, you're aware that you're dreaming. So you're awake in your dream. So you're not dreaming, you're awake. You're awake while your eyes are open. And then when you go to sleep at night, you're also awake because you're lucid. You're never asleep. Your mind is always active. So um, Dan Winter teaches us that love is the only way to bring your memory to the afterlife so that when you reincarnate, you're not completely memory wiped. In order to bring your memory, you have to have that love, which is the key through the door and death is door to the ether. So in order to walk through the door, it's not physically walking. You have to, you have to shift or transfer your consciousness through the little tiny keyhole or the eye of a needle, which is only done through love. That's why the Bible says, you, uh, it's easier for a camel to get through it through the eye of a needle, except for most people, because they're, they're, nobody's really at the unconditional love that they need to be. So Dan Winter is a beautiful, uh, he, he's a glober. He's not a flat earther, but still, uh, he has some good research, though his conclusion is a little bit off. But it's okay, right? I'll give you another one. What about Tom Campbell? I'm He's another one. He, Go he, ahead. Huh? Tell me about he talks about He talks about becoming love. He says you must become love. That's right. Because look, meditation is not the true um, word that we should be using. It's transcendental meditation because meditation is like when you use the word premeditated murder. When you have a premeditated murder, that's because you meditated before you did it, which means you thought about doing it before you did it. There's something, there's something called manslaughter, which is an accident, like if you run somebody over, but premeditated murder is when you, when, you <laughs> left, when you left your house knowing that you were gonna go run someone over. So premeditated means you thought about it before you left. Meditation means thinking. Transcendental meditation has nothing to do with thought. It's becoming love itself. You, you're, you become it, you know, you know it by being it. And it's, it's not, not thinking about it, you, you just know it. I'll give, I'll give, I'll, I'll give a, uh, another way how to say it. Uh, and this, 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 this validates your point. And that is if you meditate, you go meditate for like 20 minutes, you stop the thoughts. And then all you're doing is avoiding the thoughts. So as you avoid or resist these thoughts and try to escape through a meditation, What's, what's happening is the evil is actually subconsciously triggering you and downloading you with these future evil despicable acts because you're, we're not actually, when we're meditating like that, we're just meditating for a certain period of time just to try to stop the mind. When really what my brother uh, Divine Being Being Divine is saying is he's saying that your whole life has to become a constant meditation not to where you go meditate for 10 minutes 
but to where you meditate 24 seven. That's right. Or uh, resonate at the love frequency as much as possible. That's also what it means. It means uh, don't let little things get you angry or pissed off. You have to rise above that. And that's what it means to walk on water like Jesus. He didn't literally walk on water because he didn't literally exist. But what it means is you rise above your emotions and keep your head above water and don't let don't let the the weight of the water hold you down and right. drown you. And what that what what's that saying is is when you do meditate, don't try to stop the mind. Don't negate what's flowing through, but put your head above water by observing your thoughts. The water being the mind. There you go. Yeah, don't get don't get uh hit by those waves, ride those waves, right? They support you. Don't try to suppress with meditation. Allow what is to be, observe it, let it flow through you and recycle through you and leave your system. If not, you're just going to try to hide something and then as you do that, it creates a shadow. This shadow wants to live still because it exists inside of you. So unconsciously, the shadow is going to exist because there's a whole bunch of uh, things that distract you out here that program us and repetitively put us in a state to where we're receptive, receptive uh, to these type of attacks. And if, if, if we don't have that negation inside of us then we grow from it and it no longer can harm us or affect us it's like that one saying that says we are of this world but not from this world so it's saying everything that happens to you in this life don't be too focused on it because we're just passing through so like you said observe everything that's happening and don't let it piss you off or make you sad if you lose your parents Everyone, everyone dies eventually. So don't, don't be too attached. And, and cause that's going to keep you limited and bounded to this realm. You want to return to where we came from, which is the unlimited realm. This is the limited, this is the realm of limitation and condition, isn't it? Yeah. And, uh, it's a test. Don't focus on the negativity. And, and especially if you can't do something about it, then there's no sense of worrying about it. Because if you that that's the, one of the main teachings in stoicism. That's right. It's like uh, yeah. Well, we can move on. That that's a, it's a good concept. Just not letting yourself, don't beat yourself up more than you have to be. Just and remember, you're not your thoughts. That's why when your thoughts when when these thoughts come, you observe them. You're it's observing like yourself from the outside looking in is what you're doing. Instead of from the inside looking out, looking at the world, looking at the world from as a reflection of you, you're seeing the world, the, 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 your collective unconscious and your unconscious, you're seeing it. Yes, yeah, like, like this. Um, the, floating the, at the top of the water. Since we are all God having a human experience in, in many, the one God has many forms, which is us and plants and minerals and animals, everything. So, uh, so basically, <laughs> well, we'll have to edit this out. Fuck. What was I going to say? Look. No, just, just, just go back to your slide. It'll come to you. <laughs> go back to the slide because this slide looks very interesting. And I'm sure you got something great to say about this slide. Yeah, look, this Fibonacci sequence, this flower right here is pink and it has, it has basically a thousand petal lotus, okay? You go to the right here and what you have is this, pe this petal has five petals. This flower has five petals. The next one has four petals and the next one has two petals. And you can see the symmetry. It's, it's split like a mirror, right? And so is the four petals. So the only way you can have flowers that have two petals and then four petals and then five and then six is because it comes from this one flower that has all the petals. So now the offspring can be 
can have less. It's like this. I, I cannot just evolve a horn out of my head. Over, over time and over time, I'm not just going to get a horn that starts sticking out of my head. But what could happen is if I did have a horn, over time, my horn can decrease. So, so you can lose parts of your body, but you can't gain parts of your body. Do you understand that? So there's no such thing as evolution where you evolve and start gaining parts. That's impossible. That's not, that doesn't happen like that. What happens is from pure intelligence, everything gets smaller or less and less. So that's why you have the beautiful four petaled flower or five petals because it comes from the thousand petals. Everything that is, is just a little piece of everything that, no, everything that can be is just a tiny fractal of, of whatever always was, is, and is to come. That's it. Yeah, it, as, as you go, you look at it, uh, like my brother was saying last night on a Killer Priest podcast, uh, Kai Zodiac, he was talking about the vanishing lines and he showed it and it's 12 rays. And as you look at it, there's, there's a tunnel right there in the middle. Now that tunnel being the black sun, being the womb, being space, being Saturn, being matter, being time. Now, what it is, is this tunnel is dark. You have to go through this dark tunnel, but what do they say? They say that there's light at the end of the tunnel, right? Well, that light at the end of the tunnel is what? Well, it's not the black sun, it's the white sun is the light at the end of the tunnel. You see this where? You don't see it physically. You see it in your psychic mind. But as you get to that end of the tunnel, as you get to that white light through this black sun, through this black light, through this pupil, through dark matter, you get to that light at the end of the tunnel. But once you get through to that white light, you get you go through the white light. And as you come out of the, the tunnel, there goes your orange sun your gold sun and there goes your earth there goes your reality there goes your heaven on earth there goes your animals there goes your plants there goes your minerals there goes your grass your mountains everything your trees once you get out of the tunnel the tunnel is the black sun it's darkness you have to see that white light at the end of the tunnel, which is your chakras, which is your alien, your extraterrestrial self in a sci-fi way of putting it. Let me tell you, you know, aliens saying. and all that is just sci-fi. But once you get out of that tunnel, y'all, there goes life. And that's heaven. Life is heaven. Once you're grateful and live in all 24-7. What's up with this slide, brother? Hold on. Let me tell you what Santos said about, uh, about the... Uh... about what you just said what'd you just say so yeah <laughs> my brother last night kai zodiac great rapper part of the royal priesthood we're gonna be on it just so everyone knows we're going on the killer priest podcast very soon i've been on there already three times shout out to ad killer priest and kai zodiac all of them so kai zodiac said last night we're gonna have him on the show soon he's 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 an astrology master a Zodiac master. His name is Kai Zodiac. So listen, he talked about the vanishing lines. He showed it. He didn't get it up to all what I'm getting into because I, I added to it. I'm adding to it. So there's a tunnel. This tunnel is the black sun. You, oh, yeah, which is up. the womb. You go through, you got to see the white sun in your psychic mind. Faith, faith, the white sun, white sun. You got to know that there's light at the end of the tunnel. So as you get to this white light, you find out this white light isn't even white and that black light wasn't even black. What it really is, is all of these beautiful colors and flowers and undulating beings. And then you come to find out in this reality, in this heaven on earth, in this garden of Eden, there's a such thing as storms and rain. Because there's cycles and it goes from the age of Aries to the age of Taurus. Both of these words are really the same. If you look at Aries, the last four letters, uh, if you look at Osiris, the last four letters of Osiris is Aries. You look at Horus, the last four letters of Horus is Aries. You look at Taurus, the, the, it sounds like Aries. 
because you're not getting far off, but now you're getting into the bull, into the cerebellum, into the double, into the duality of life, light and darkness, masculine and feminine. Look, Santo said, when you die and you see the white light, that's that's reincarnation when you come back to this earth. And he said, exactly. when you die, you, you can turn around and go towards the black light, which is going back to the ether. So he said, when you see the white light, if you go towards the light, you reincarnate and you, you, your memory gets wiped because the, the color white in Spanish is blanco. So your memory becomes blank, blanco, when you go to the white light. And when you go to the black light, you go back to the black where there is no lack. That's where everything is, pure information. That's space. And yep, that's, that's where everything's at. Space is the potential of all that ex ever ex did exist, will exist, and exist now. That's and all so, in space. And so that the mind is white light. The, the soul is black. That's the black sun, the source. The source God of all creation, the black hole, where everything springs from and returns to, the nexus. Non-Cartesian, counter space, black hole. So what I wanted to say before that I forgot and I remembered now is Osho. Osho said that if, if you're climbing up a mountain, you don't want to bring a bunch of heavy stuff up the mountain with you. Why would you want to bring a bunch of rocks? It's, it's going to slow you down. And it's going to make you exhausted by the time you go up to the top. So you want to get rid of everything and basically walk up naked if you could. Nothing on you. No no baggage, no luggage, no heavy weight. So that's why you want, that's why veganism helps you to be lighter than a feather mentally and physically. And that's why they say bless you to be, to be less. You want to be less dense, less emotional, less suffering, less heavy, less dense, and be lighter than a feather. That's what true ascension is. Uh, so Veganism just helps you become lighter if you're heavy because people have a lot of heavy emotions. They have a lot of heavy doubts, pressures. So yeah, it's all about being light. And that's what I have here. Uh, let me share my screen now because we've been, we haven't been, <laughs> look at my screen here. I want you to see this. This is Newton Gebb. Oh, look, this is the eye we were talking about yesterday. Remember? Ah, there it is. That's the cornea. That's the dome. This is the North Pole, the Tropic of Cancer, Equator, and Capricorn. The, the islands are the lands on the eye. The islands. You get it? <coughs> oh, oh, I E Y E L E N S, islands. And then I, islands, I, I S L A N D S. Well, yeah, but I lands, because these are lands on the iris of the eye, the blue part, the blue or the brown or the hazel. Right. I lens and then I lens, L-E-N-S. Yeah, like a lens. Yeah, sure. Lens. So and so the the sclera, the white part, is the Antarctic wall. So yeah, it's as above, so below. And uh, here is the Mount Atlas, which is the center of the Atlas. It's Atlas means world. So Mount Atlas is Mount Maru. It's the volcano that erupted that produced all the land of the Earth. It's one giant continent. It's not seven continents. And by the way, look at this man right here. He's the North Pole. That's you, each one of us. The, the galaxy actually stands for Gal Axis. And it's a it's an axis of the tree of life. It's the Mother Earth woman. She, she's a tree. And uh, every tree splits and it gets smaller and smaller. For instance, this is your trachea. Your trachea is your throat, but even throat has the word tree in it, throat, tree. It's your trachea and it turns into two bronchioles, actually two bronchi, which go into your lungs. And then it splits even more and becomes bronchioles and splits even more and becomes your capillaries. So one trachea, two bronchi, many bronchioles, and, and that's what your oxygen. So it just splits and splits and splits. And that's what this is, this. It's like Aries. And that's the, the ram up here. It's the McDonald's shape. It's your old horse field. Um, it's, it's the McDonald's shape, the heart shape. It's a torus field. It's this. And it comes out from the heart and it goes into the bottom of your spine, out the top of your head. From your heart to heaven and then in, in through hell 
back to heart, back to heaven. So that's all it is. Um, we have six minutes left. That's that's a good amount of time because I want to share the rest of this. All right, check this out, brother. This is what I want to show you here. That, that literally right there, what you're showing right there, brother. Uh, go, go up a little bit to the eyeball again. Now you see that, not even the big eyeball, but the little one. Let's look, let's look at the little ball, little eyeball. Zoom that in. Now look at that, y'all. That top is the North Pole. And then right there was what you have at the top is the plane of inertia. Right there, it shows it. That's the plane of inertia. Now, the rest of the, the circle of the eyeball is under Earth. It's all underneath. Which it's like yes, an iceberg, like an iceberg. Right. Yes, it creates a sphere totally. But the Earth itself is a plane. And it, 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 it's, it's not on the whole sphere. It's just on the top, in the middle, at the top right under the North Pole, under the dome, under the cornea. And in the middle, in the center is what? Similarity. We all need to come together, again, away from the white light, away from separateness. The white light, everything wants to be separate. That's why. That's why you reincarnate again, because the white light is the neutrino electron, and all of them want to scatter away from each other, and they want to go to the outside of the circle. All right, well, let me show you something. Like a proton. Look at this. This proves flat earth right here. They should make us the leaders of the flat earth because with, with not only with this video, with the other videos and with the videos we, co we got coming up, there's going to be no disputing what, what, what we're showing you guys when it comes to the... Uh, do you, do the you see what I'm sharing? Mind. Hold on, look. Do you see this right here? Yeah. Look it. Wait, do you, do you see it for sure? Hey, see. Okay, look. This right here is called the hyaloid canal. Do you see the word? I see it. That's called the hyaloid canal because it's the hyperboloid. This is the hourglass inside your eye. It's a torus field. The whole eyeball is a torus, and there's the hyperbola. It's the stick. You see it? Yeah, and there's the apple, too. It, it looks like an apple. The eye yeah. looks like an apple. So, yeah, it's, it's not completely spherical. It is a ball shape, but it's hollow. Right. It's, not, it's, it's more, pear, more pear shaped. Yeah. So anyways, um, now look, let me show you. Do you still see my page? Do you, do you see the YouTube channel I'm on? All right, let me, yeah. let me play these videos. This is the super cell, the ferro cell that Ken Willer, Ken Willer invented. Check this out. This one's a little too powerful. I'm actually getting this ring magnet here, but I'm going to only cover it. That's a ring magnet. The, no matter what shape magnet you use, the, the magnetic field is the same. problem with something being more sensitive. You see more when something... So there it is. Oh, we got a stupid commercial. Oh. Yeah, and look, one thing. Fuck just happened. That's why. That's why they call it the the, the North Pole, right? Aurora Borealis. That's why they call it Paradise, because it's pear shaped, and at the top, where that North Pole is, where that cornea is, where that plane goes up into a point, into a center, down into a hyperbole. There is Paradise. And it's in the shape of a pair. Nature of the universe, force and motion. Are That's right. So the, this is the magnetic field right there. That's the counter rotating fields of magnetism. This, uh, and look, this is this is LED lights. You could even use the sunlight and put the ferrofluid in here and put the magnet under this, and you will see the magnetic field. Now it's crazy because even the Indians knew this. That's why they put this as the heart, the crown chakra, because they knew what a magnetic field looks like. They were so advanced. Technologically, it's, it's insane. So check this out. Let me go back to it. Now look, this is what the, the magnetic field looks like. Somebody made a video. This video is amazing. Check this out. We don't want people to think that we think that we're smarter than y'all because we're not. We just we do all, the research. We're together trying to learn. We're all trying to learn. Of course, that we're all trying to learn from the ancients. Go back as far as you can, study what they were talking about, and then it all comes together and matches in each culture that you study. Are you seeing what I'm sharing? Do you see this? See. I look, this is a magnet. The energy is, the energy is showing you the mid pressure right here. That's only the mid pressure. It goes out the top into the center. Now you're gonna see the high pressure. Out the top, into the bottom. Out the top, look at it, it's going, the red one's going zoop, and it goes into the bottom. Zoop. So, so now, as they look at this, now they see what the waters above the firmament means. And what is it? It's more magnetism, right? Coming in and out. 
So it's what? What is that? What what is that? What is that? Those and yellow. Look, uh, it's it. That, what, is that, what type magnetic, of energy is that? Th those are the magnetic field lines. That's radiation. That's magnetism. Ra radiation, magnetism, dielectricity, right? So look. So um. It's light, right? It's called the luminiferous ether, which is magnetism. That's what magnetism is because magnetism carries electricity. So when you look up and you see the stars in the heaven, that's the ether carrying the stars or magnetism carrying electricity. Same thing. That's all it is. That's why he called it the luminiferous ether. So this is the full magnetic. Ooh, yeah. That's 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 nice because now now people see that uh you got the, you got the body and then around that you got the ether and then around that you got the emotions and then around that you got the mental body so that just proves look, right there to people that right around you is your magnetic field and that's the ether look we got less than a minute so let me show you this we're gonna have to do another one but check this out this is huge what you just said is called the subtle bodies so i have that right here look that's right these are the subtle bodies um right here look the, the bliss body, wisdom, mind, energy, and the physical. It's actually opposite. It's supposed to start with the physical, uh, like earth at the bottom, and then it goes all the way up to stars, to the firmament. It's basically the Ptolemaic system. We go from the bottom all the way to the top. It's the celestial hierarchy. Look, earth is at the, the bottom, tunnel. and you go up to the stars.